Another day, another live. Happy New Week. We are here at Broadway Music Sessions. I am your host, Geraldine Anello, and we are kicking the week off an amazing start because uh, instead of Broadway Music Sessions today, we should be called West End Music Sessions. Straight from <laughs> London, we have Katie Richardson, the music director of Six the Musical. Hey, Katie. Hey. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am good as well. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you on. So everyone, if you do not know Katie, she is the music director of Six uh, on the West End. She also was the, is, I should say, the associate music director supervisor for Six UK Tour, I assume, as well as Six Australia. How fun is that? Uh, she was also the music director for Natalie Paris in concert and the associate music director for the UK tour of Dr. Dolittle. It is so nice to have you here. Everyone, if you want to ask questions uh, to Katie, mark them in the comments. Uh, make sure you put your name so I can tell uh, who is asking them and I will ask them on your behalf. Uh, so Katie, Six the Musical, I mean that musical has really taken the musical theater world by storm. Are you, is it like such a thrill to be a part of that show? Yeah, it's it's been the most crazy thing to watch it because I, I joined like two years ago when we were still doing The Fringe. So yeah, it's been it's been a pretty wild ride. Um, so I mean, I, I like there's just something about six that's just cool it's like you just think the musical and it feels like this kind of like untouchable like really cool factor do you feel really cool from being in the show um to be honest it took a while but now i'm like i think so i don't know i don't know if you should ever think of yourself as cool um <laughs> but i think the show is really cool and the writers are the coolest they are so, yeah yeah they are <laughs> so how did you get involved with that what what was the process for you to first join um, it was one of those really just weird things that just felt really lucky where I just got an email out of the blue from Joe Baton, who's the musical supervisor, saying, um, you know, we're looking for a musical director for six, you've been recommended, um, can you, you know, are you free this week for a telephone interview? So um, I basically said, yeah, and I had a telephone interview the next day, and they were like, great, can you come in and meet us tomorrow? Wait, 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 so I have, I have lots of follow-up questions already. Okay. One, was the show already <laughs> slated for the West End? No. Um, well, it, it was slated for a three week tryout at the Arts Theatre. And the Arts Theatre is this like in, in London is like the, where we are still is this like halfway house. It's, it's officially the smallest West End house. But um, before Six was in there, like no one really was really sure if it counted as West End and no one was sure if it was eligible for the Olivier's. And it's like this weird hybrid where people do tryouts before they move on and, to bigger theatres. And, and, and the Olivier for all of the American listeners is the equivalent to the Tony's UK style. Yeah. Yeah, it's our Tony's. So, um, so it, we had three weeks there, like limited season. And that was all as a stop on the tour. That's all we thought we were mm -hmm. getting. So you, you were hoping to get this job for the three week version of it. Yeah, and for Edinburgh Fringe, um, and also I was um, actually contracted to start the Doctor Doolittle tour like four months in, so it was like a, it feels stupid to say now, but it was like a gap fill for mm -hmm. me. So um, then you, you got that telephone interview, What what is that like? Fill us in. <laughs> um, the whole six team is totally different to any other show team that I've worked on, like they're all, because they wrote it when they were at uni, like the directors the and the writers and the supervisor. Um, are all really young, like 24, 25. Um, the uh, orchestrators are similar age to me. The choreographers are a little bit older than me, maybe like five years older than me. So like it's 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 a, it's a really young team. So it was a really different style interview. They were just sort of asking what sort of things I liked um, and if I'd heard of the show. And I think it was Joe's first time hiring. So um, we, it was more of a like get, getting to know each other chat. Um, but then the really funny thing was they said, okay, great. Well, can you come meet us tomorrow? And, and I was like, oh, actually I can't because I'm going to see Beyonce at Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> and Toby said they, that that was the moment when you. They you right there. You probably yeah. said that and that probably was exactly yeah. what got you hired yeah he, that, he said, saying, she's in <laughs> yeah that's what toby the composer said he was like at that <laughs> moment i knew <laughs> so you didn't even tell me that story i just assumed yeah you were right <laughs> so you got hired so basically you got your job thanks to beyonce basically yeah so if she's <laughs> listening um thank you for that <laughs> beyonce i'll make sure to pass it on <laughs> yeah do <laughs> uh like catherine Kroll says you do not cancel for beyonce that is so true <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> 
I just, yeah, and I was one of those things. I, I was like, I paid a lot of money for these tickets. Like, I'm really sorry, but I can't come. But they were so gracious about it. Um, I think, you know, in, in hindsight, I maybe shouldn't have said that, but then it, it worked out. But then again, it got too high. Okay, so, okay, yeah. so you, you say no. They decide to hire you. Yeah. What happens next? Did you have the meeting in person in the end? Did they just skip over that because of the Beyonce thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I did go in to meet them. Um, but it wasn't really like an interview. It was just sort of a, hi, this is what I look like. It was really, really informal. Um, and then they sent me the script and the score and the, rec the demos from the workshop. And it was more like, listen to these, do you want to do it? Um, mm -hmm. And then I got the offer. So, so then yeah, what, ha what, what happens then? You do the three weeks. You're, you're set to do Dr. Dolittle. And what happens? Did you do Dr. Dolittle? Yeah, you... I, I, I went to do Dr. Dolittle. I had, I had an associate that took over from me and the, the six producers were really gracious in, in working around my availability. Um, and then I worked on Dr. Dolittle. We did the whole rehearsal process. It was new dance arrangements, completely new orchestration. So it was a lot of work for the music team. Um, and then um, we sort of got that up and running. It was running for a few months. And then unfortunately it was um, served notice early and canceled after like three months. So it was really awful for the rest of the company. Um, but I was just really, really lucky because when I when I got the two week notice call, uh, I called six because by that point we, they were reopening in the West End um, and said, is there any chance I can have my old job back? And they basically said, yeah. <laughs> So, so, you, so lucky for me. You at some point picked Dr. Doddle's UK tour over doing the West End part of Six, or you just didn't was, know it was going to be on the West End yet? We didn't know. And I'd already signed the contract. So before I was hired by Six at all, I'd already signed my contract for Dr. Doolittle. Um, mm -hmm. And it was when it was, it was like when we were at the arts theatre in the three weeks that we found out we were going, going to be coming back. But at that time, I was like, that's really amazing for the show but I won't be there because I'm already contracted to Dr. Doolittle. Yeah, so and it wasn't it, just the way it worked out. And then Dr. Doolittle closed early. Yeah, sadly. That's interesting that you feel that it's sadly given where it took well, you right away. <laughs> I mean, selfishly, it worked out amazing for me um, because I got to go back. And the day I started back at six was um, the, the day the Olivier nominations came out. So it was like a really amazing day. Um, but... I mean, that the, the Dr. Lewis tour was like a lot of, it was like 50 or 60 people that are employed and they all lost their jobs. So that's why it was sad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how different, then you go to the West End, how different was that process getting the show ready for the West End than it was for the three week halfway house um, is the thing to call it <laughs> well the f I mean I'm sure the arts theatre wouldn't take kindly on me saying that but I mean it's considered a West End theatre now but the reason I say that is because like people didn't even realize it was eligible for the Olivier's mm -hmm. until the six nominations came out that's why it was like it was a bit weird but now like people think it's a West End uh theatre which it is um I mean it was it was kind of it was the same we, we were lucky enough that we kept the all of the same cast stayed on. Um, we picked up a couple of extra covers, um, which was great because we and originally it was, it was quite a low budget tour. So we only had one cover who covered all six and we went up to three. So we had to train them. Um, there was a couple of little rewrites, um, but because we'd already been there, we already had the set that fit. We already had the costumes. We already had everything was done. Um, so it was just tweaking it again, basically. Yeah, obviously, every department had a little bit that they wanted to change because that's the nature of a new musical. But because we kept the same cast, it was actually not too bad. And we only that, did a week. Remap. And that being your <clears throat> first West End show, how different was it from any other show you had music directed in the past? Um, I had a lot more to do um, because it's a really, really tech heavy show. And I'd used main stage a bit before, I'd used track a bit before, but it was the level at which I had to use it. And then also when I found out um, before the tour that all the lights were time coded, I was like, so I'm in charge of the lights as well. Wait, so you mean you you created the main stage programming, you you uh, created the tracks, you created the Ableton. No, I code. didn't do them. Um, the, the orchestrator Tom did them, but I'm, I meant just physically operating them. I see, I see. Um, Because it's quite, the six rig is quite a bit big rig for the MD because you cue everything yourself. <laughs> Fun time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it, it, I was really, the main difference is I was really aware that there was so much of that. Um, also the thing with Six is the band's on stage. So I have to give everything to the camera 
um, because even the band have to look out. So they, they don't get any of their stuff from looking at me. It's always at the camera. So oh, it was all to the camera, which I hadn't really done before. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was a learning curve, um, but it was cool. Do those band members have their own individual um, video set up or do they have to look out to the balcony and see the videos out there? Um, to the balcony, but oh the arts theatre, I think it's probably different <laughs> um, in the Brooks Atkinson. Um, I, I've not seen the stage set up. I was meant to be coming, but then Broadway shut. Um, but uh, in the arts theatre is not there. Like the balcony has quite a heavy overhang. And so it's actually not very far away. Um, so, and the screens are big. So for them, it's kind of fine. Like it's in a normal, in a normal size theatre or a Broadway theatre, I could see that that would be awful. But it's in the arts, it's the sight line's really clear and it's not very far. So it's, it works out okay. Okay. They also all the girls, all the girls on six in the West End have been doing it as long as I have, so they know the show so well, mm-hmm. which also helps. So, what is your rig like? You said it's really technology heavy. What does it look like concretely? Um, so I've, I've got the lucky that I've only got one keyboard. <laughs> I think there was chat of being more than one, but there's only <laughs> one. Um, then so we've got we actually use Cubase now to to trigger the tracks rather than Ableton because Ableton crashed so much that we just decided to turn over a new leaf and change so i've got the, i've got the um cubase monitor um the um obviously the trigger buttons we, we have a back right stop start mm-hmm. thing um then me- the main stage keyboard um i'm trying to think i'm like i've not been there in two and a half months <laughs> what do quiz. i do quiz um, on you <laughs> yeah. you know your rig yeah um oh there's the the inbuilt sounds on the keyboard for if main stage fails um which is sort of like straight ahead uh I do the show off by heart so I don't have music anymore which is good because it's one less thing to do not having to do the page turns um yeah, was, that, the same time was of- that your choice or was that a directorial choice um originally it, it wasn't it wasn't a thing they the band it was a directorial choice that the rest of the band had to have it off book but Joe bless his soul the supervisor said Katie's not doing that she's got too much to do um but purely from volume of doing it I I just got it off book um after maybe two months and 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 sort of in chats with Joe to Joe I was saying like it's actually really doable learning off by heart like it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be so now um I think all the sixes around the world the the MDs do off by heart but the depths don't have to so if the cover MD is ever on, um, they're, they're allowed to have music because that's just another stress level that isn't needed. Now, um, but yeah. what, about, what about the other subs? Do they also get a free pass at memorization or they have to? <laughs> they have to have it off. Yeah. That's a lot. So how hard is it for those musicians to find subs? Um, it's been really hard because obviously they have to be female um they have to be comfortable in the style which um we found like with drummers in particular a lot of them have found that uh, i found that quite hard here um because i I don't know i guess the style's just so different to most other shows um but what we've ended up doing particularly with the um guitar and the bass is hiring a lot of musicians that are band musicians rather than um pit players Mm -hmm. uh because they're more used to the style and more used to working off book um, which has actually worked out really well. And so what's the rule? Because in on Broadway, it's 50% of the time. Once you pass the preview period, every musician in the band, including the music director, is allowed to take off 50% of the time. Uh, is it? I, I know it's quite different in the West End. Can you explain to us Americans what, uh, what it's like <laughs> in the West End? Um, I think the first... I'm not sure what the MD rule is because we're not, um, the six contracts work slightly differently because of the size of the theatre. So there's loads of union rules here that depend on the theatre size. And because the arts theatre is so small, the rules are slightly different. But the um, the, the girls in the band, it's, you have to pay 51% of shows yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's even a percentage for me. I think I think I'm just expected to... I don't know. I've never. I, I. I don't know if the rules are different. I may be sounding very ignorant, but I only only know mine, and um, I don't have. It's definitely not fifty one percent, but I can't think what it is. It's a lot have, higher. <laughs> have you? Oh, it's a lot higher. Yeah. Oh, you're allowed to take off much more often. Or no. You're, oh, the opposite. As in, I, I have to play much more shows myself than fifty one percent. That makes yeah. sense. So, is it the same in the West End that as the music director, you get to watch the show from the house once a week? 
Um, it, yeah, it depends on your contract. Mine's actually once every two weeks. Um, but yeah, once a, once a week or once every two weeks is normal. Mm -hmm. So do you take off outside of those times? Have you ever taken off just to take off? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, <laughs> well, I think I, I've had a couple of like other gigs or holiday, obviously, because um, we get four weeks holiday in the UK a year. That is unheard of. Yeah. In New York City. <laughs> that is like holiday. What? What is that? Yeah. Word? Yeah. When is the weeks. holiday? When is the four week holiday happen? Is it um, in well, summer? Is it at holiday time? Uh, we can take them whenever we like, um, except for um, the Christmas period is always embargoed because else everyone would try and get it off. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I thought you meant that there was a collective show stop for four weeks. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and the, <laughs> yeah, but the, I, I am not completely... Uh, the reason I thought that is because I was talking with people who were about to do The Lion King in Paris, and it was a nine-month contract with one or two months off in the summertime before they would go back into the second season. It was a proper uh -huh. show stop. The whole show is on hiatus for a month. Everybody goes on vacation. We all reconvene, start again. Yeah, that's that's very French. Um, <laughs> I think like the rules true, in Europe. True. I think the rules in Europe are um, like the whole. Is it in Paris? Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole of Paris like stops in August, right? <laughs> all of France, all of August. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like... But I mean, it doesn't get that hot here, I guess. So we don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then you went to, you were the associate music director supervisor for six UK tour and six Australia. How different is it in your experience to music director show you're a part of on the daily and a show that's now you have to like put your own imprint on without being there all the time? What is that? So, what does that look like? I'm the uh, the UK associate musical supervisor, which basically um, is like, so it's like standing in for Joe when he's abroad. Um, so I've actually never conducted the UK tour of six. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would love to, and I think that one day it might happen, but I have... As yet, never done it. All oh, right, but as a supervisor, you go in and you have uh, responsibility. What are those like? Yeah, um, so a lot of with six because it's such a massive vocal is keeping the vocal clean, um, which is no mean feat because it's it's so high demand for them, particularly as they never leave the stage and they all sing backing vocals for each other and they all have like a lead level vocal. So it's keeping that and it's also... Um, uh, creatively keeping it in line with the, Toby and Lucy who's the, who are the writers vision and I think because I worked with them from the start I'm lucky to have quite a direct communication line with them um but it, it's also because it's so different to other musicals like it, it, it's much more like a pop concert so making sure everything stays in line with that and doesn't get too musical theatre um is kind of my main job how do you do that concretely like what are some of the conversations you have around that um a lot is you're using too much vibrato in that. <laughs> Please take it out. Um, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, that's not the agreed riff. Um, <laughs> Please don't make up your own. Yeah, that's a big one. Wait, so um, are there any riffs they're allowed to make up at any point? Or do they come up with their own riff in rehearsal and once it's approved, it's their own approved riff? Or is there one riff and everybody that comes in the role does it? It's the second one. So each each actress, including the covers, they all have their own approved riff, which is theirs, which was made up in conjunction with me and Joe and Toby, uh, the composer. Um, but they also all have a backup riff, which is for like a day if they're if they're struggling a bit vocally, but they have they can't go off. It, it, there's their they're like contingency riff. So they kind of have two choices. Contingency riff. Yeah, because <laughs> it is like, most of them are like at the top of their capabilities. So if it's every day where they've got a bit of a head cold, it's just not happening. Yeah. Um, so how, what differences have you found between uh, super associate music supervising the UK tour and, and the Australian tour? Any difference in cast, any difference in conversation, audience reaction? Um, Australia, I'm obviously a lot more hands-on because I'm much physically further away. So I was, I, but I was there for the auditions, which was awesome. I was, I've never known jet lag like it because I was only there for two weeks. And me and the associate choreographer and the associate director were all there in place of our bosses. Um, and really felt like the weight of the world on our shoulders because we were casting on their behalf. Um, but yeah, it, it's really it's really cool. The the um, the thing that was most different between the UK and Australia is because six worldwide it's encouraged that everyone does it in their own accents. So on Broadway it's in American accents, in the UK it's in all sorts of regional British accents and on Aust in Australia we're really keen for it to be um, in Australian accents and that's not like the hand up caricature but just like how they actually speak um and the Australian cast find that so difficult because every other show they've ever been in they're either putting on a British accent or 
putting on an American accent. Oh. Um, yeah, so that was a really big thing for them and a big thing for us to try and get across from the music department was gentle encouragement of getting them to do that. That's fascinating. Yeah, this yeah I know. <laughs> it never occurred to me before. They, they were like, oh, we, we've only, they did, um, I can't think what, what, there's one musical they did that was set in Australia. I can't think what it was. They were all saying, they were like, we had to do it for that, but that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they found that really tricky. Oh my gosh. Um, so what is it? Is it set? Is it open ended at the moment? And you, you, you're going to go back when the world reopens? Is that what the plan is? Um, for Six London, yeah. Six, mm-hmm. Six London is, is going back um, <laughs> whenever, whenever that may be. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely going back. And um, I, the tour is also going to be back up and running when it's allowed to be. Um, I don't know if those the West End and the touring circuit in the UK will be at the same time, but whenever those things start, the six will be back, yeah, which is and so nice to know. So nice to know. And were you yeah. involved with the cast album at all? No, it was actually done before I got on board. Um, it was mostly like a studio album and it was with the the workshop cast. Um, so, But we actually, Natalie and Amy, who were both on the uh, workshop cast, were in the original West End cast as well. But sadly, I, I so, so would have loved to do it. But um, yeah, I wasn't. Hopefully, I'm hoping we might get to do a live album at some point. I'm hoping so but as well. we'll that would be yeah. really fun to have a live because like you said, it's such a pop rock show that having like the audience reaction yeah. and all of that. Yeah, I know. I think it'll be really cool. And there's a bit, there's a few things that are a bit different live. Like um, the bassist in the West End is a really amazing slap bassist. So we added in slap bass solos for her and just little tweaks like that that aren't the same on the album. So that would be really cool. Fingers, fingers crossed. Oh, that is so fun. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being with us today, sharing your time uh, from London and uh, letting us know how it works in the West End. Everyone, thank you for (laughs) tuning live. Uh, We will be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. with Jason Hart. Uh, Thank you again, Katie. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye, everyone.